Hello Bakers and welcome to Upside Down. This is the start of a series where we are going to model an interior for a bathroom. And after that, we are going to have a look how we can use Unreal Engine 5 for rendering visualizations. We are going to have a look not only on modeling, but as well on texturing, creating materials, setting up the scene for Unreal, and as well everything from lights and how to do the final images. Now without further ado, let's start the first episode of this series. First, we are going to start by modeling the walls, floor and ceiling, and then little by little, starting to add some of the other models, like for example, the tiles and some of the other decorations. So I know already the size of uh, the whole space that we are gonna build. And I'm going to start by just creating a box. And this box, I know that the height is uh, 2.7 meters. So I'm just going to make it 2.7 meters height. And one of the big walls is uh, 1.82. And for the thickness of the walls, I'm going to leave it on uh, 10 centimeters. It's not super important about the thickness unless uh, like you have the other rooms. We are in our case just going to build the bathroom. But uh, in general, it's better to have like the thickness and everything kind of correct. And especially uh, when we are doing a whole scene, it's good to have the outer and like the thickness of the wall uh, so that everything works properly and we don't get any visual defects and bugs uh, later on. So uh, I'll just move this a little bit around. So uh, we move better on to the middle of the scene. And now I'm going to right click and convert it to editable poly. So we can start extruding and adding some of the other parts. I'm going to start uh, going to this side. So I'll select uh, the polygon over here by going into polygon selection, or you can press four on the keyboard as a shortcut. And then we are going to click extrude. I'm extruding it by 10 centimeters again, because this is going to be the thickness of uh, that wall. And then I'm going to select the other polygon, again, extrude. I know that uh, this wall is uh, 2.4 meters. So here we can type 2.4, enter, and then we click OK. Then I'm going to extrude one more time, 10 centimeters. And then this wall is 1.3 meters, 1.3. And now we're gonna do from here, extrude. 10 centimeters. This wall over here, it has uh, a door. So here is the entrance to the bathroom. So I'm going to just first do the extrusion. So uh, it goes to the frame and this is uh, 86. So 86. And then one more time an extrude, which is one meter. And then here we have a wall, which is uh, looks like this. So I'm just going to uh, select both of these polygons. And after that, I'm going to use bridge in order to uh, collapse it and get the final result as it is. Now we need to make a few more cuts. So first one is going to be that there is a window over here and we're going to need to add a few edges in order to be able to cut it. And as well, we need to add the height for the door and then uh, completely cut the hole over here. So first let's uh, start by uh, doing the cut in this section. So we need to do a cut, which is 43 centimeters from the wall. And uh, the way to do it is, uh, and like to measure it correctly, once we already did the whole cutting and uh, everything like that, uh, what we can do, we can first put a few markers because the cut uh, of the hole, it's not that important. It's important that uh, the measurements in terms of like position for the window itself is uh, on the correct place. So uh, what we can do is uh, I can just grab, let's say a plane uh, and do it from here like this and we don't need this part to be like two meters and then we can just make it uh, 43 and i'm going to use this as a marker like that so after that we will be able to just snap our corners and everything over here 
or uh, what I can do is just directly build uh, a box but uh, let's do uh, the edges so I'm again selecting the walls then going on to edges and selecting uh, all the uh, edges on this side of the wall and going for connect then I'm going to uh, while we have still the selection I'm uh, going to use the snap tool and we are going to snap it to the corner over here. So now this is on 43 centimeters. And then I know that the next segment, 83. So this one, I'm just going to change it to 83. And now I'm snapping it like this. Edge, select all the edges. We can select it either like this or Alt and R, which is ring selection, connect. And then again, the snap to, boom, we're gonna snap it like this. Perfect. So now it's time to do the heights for uh, the doors and for the window. So the door height is two meters. Uh, we're gonna select all the edges that are uh, on the height. And then I'm going to use connect. While holding control, I'm going to click on the vertices. This way, we will move our selection to the vertices. And you can see that at the moment, they are on 1.35 meters. So I'm just going to put this on two. Let's delete this plane. We're not going to need it uh, for now. And uh, I'm going to select the two polygons for the door over here. And we're just going to bridge it. And we don't need this frame over here on the bottom. So we have uh, the door cut out. Now let's do the same thing for the window. So the window is 76 centimeters from the floor. So I'm going to do a connect again, holding control vertices and 0 0.76. Uh, so this is the bottom part of it. And then the height of uh, the window itself is 166. We can use the same technique that we did earlier with uh, the plane. So I'm just going to make a new plane, rotate it 90 degrees like that. And I'll put it over here, snap it over here. And then uh, as I mentioned, this is 166. So 1.66, let me move it to the correct place, snap it. And here we can do two things. Uh, we can either snap uh, the selection like this, or as well, we can select the upper vertices and see what's their height. But uh, I'm just going to use it like that and with the snap to move it over here. So now we have um, everything correct for where the window cutout will be. I'm just going to select the polygons from one side and another bridge and we have everything set it up now that we have uh, all these elements uh, what i'm going to do is create a mesh for the floor and for the ceiling so the mesh for the floor this is going to be the base like the very base of the floor and then on top of that we are going to put the tiles because anyway the tiles uh, they are going to raise a little bit the floor and uh, we would like to be as correct as possible just so that uh, we know after that that uh, like the sink and other elements which are going to be in here will fit correctly. So for creating the floor I'm going to use a plane uh, and uh, since the top part is uh, at the moment a little bit easier to select and do everything I'm going to create it by snapping it into those two points. We don't need uh, all the segments so just going to put it on one and one and then right click convert to editable poly i'm going to select the edge over here and by holding shift and using the move tool i will extrude it and after that snap those elements to the correct positions so now we have an element which we can use for uh, the ceiling and we're going to use the same one uh, down here for the floor i'm just going to add uh, thickness to it so using the modifier list we're going to go and search for shell and make it a 10 centimeters uh, shell. And we are going to hold shift and clone this element one more time for the bottom part, for the floor like this. So now we have all the elements uh, and everything for the room created. So we can start by adding some of the other things that we need to do.
Uh, in terms of uh, materials, we already have and we know some of the materials that uh, we're going to be using for decorating the, the bath. The person that wanted the visualization created for this bathroom already had chosen some tiles and as well some of the decorations inside. So uh, they sent us a link for uh, all the different elements. And here on the webpage, you can see that uh, they have uh, this full close-up for uh, the tiles, which is great because we can use this uh, as a texture. So I'm just going to save this image onto my hard drive. And then we also have uh, this tile, which is going to be for the walls. So those tiles, they go uh, 90 degrees and we just need to again do the same thing. I'm just going to save this and and later on, we are going to use it for creating the textures. Another element that uh, we need to take into account is the correct measurements for uh, the tiles. So we can see that uh, this one is 7.5 centimeters by 30. So this one, we know the sizes, and then those are 20 by 20 centimeters. Since we have these elements uh, saved, uh, what I'm going to do is create the two boxes which are going to be for the tiles. So these are going to be for uh, the floor tiles and as well for uh, then the wall tiles. So uh, we are doing the floor tiles first. So they are 20 by 20 centimeters. And here I'm going to make it one centimeter. That is uh, the depth of the tile. And then we need to do the other ones. So we leave the same depth, but we are going to change this part. So this is uh, 7.5. So we just make it 0.75 by three. So these are the two sides of the tiles that we have. Uh, so for the part for applying the textures, because uh, some of you might be using older version of 3ds Max, I'm not going to use the default renderer for the latest version, which is uh, Arnold, but instead going to change it to Scanline, just so that uh, also if you're using uh, 3ds Max, uh, for example, 2012 or some other version, uh, you will be able to follow the exact steps. And uh, then I'm going to click M to open the material editor. We are going to use the standard material because we just need to apply the diffuse textures on those uh, so that we have uh, the correct representation of uh, them. And now I'm just uh, drag and dropping the two textures from uh, my computer. And first one is for the bath. And then we're gonna make a new material as well for uh, the tiles. Sorry, I put this into the incorrect uh, slot. So uh, we are signing the tiles those over here and the other ones over there. So uh, before adding the chamfers, uh, we I'll show you one trick. So we have our assets as editable poly and we don't have like any chamfers or anything like this. Uh, but at some point we might uh, not want to have the chamfers. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a modifier editable poly on top of this. And then inside this modifier, we are going to do the chamfer because this way here, I'll put it like this and we're going to use the radio one and uh, two segments so that we have uh, a little bit more geometry uh, and click OK. So this way, uh, what we did is we can always turn it on and off. So for example, let's say I would like to tile this uh, perfectly next to each other. So what I can do is just grab with the snap let's say make it three and then we can turn on all the modifiers and everything will look perfect so we will have uh, perfectly aligned, aligned tiles with uh, all the uh, spaces between them correctly I'm going to do exactly the same thing for the other one we are blank editable poly Selecting everything, chamfer, and one here on two. Okay, and that's it. We have uh, the both the tiles for the wall and uh, for uh, set it up.